Hi, my name is Frank Simmerjay. I'm a Senior Product Marketing Manager with Trustworthy Computing at Microsoft. With me today, I have Vinny Gowato, General Manager of the MMPC, the Mal Microsoft Malware Protection Center, and Mr. Tim Raines, Director with Trustworthy Computing. Uh, today, we'd like to discuss with you findings that we have in Security Intelligence Report, Volume 11. Uh, Tim, could you tell us a little bit about some of the findings as far as uh, vulnerabilities and, and uh, exploit information? Sure. So uh, vulnerabilities and exploits um, has been a very active period, the first half of 2011. In terms of vulnerability uh, disclosures across the entire software industry, we're seeing a, a very positive trend, a 23% reduction sort of year over year in, um, in vulnerability disclosures. You know, uh, I'd like to actually uh, shift the conversation, talk a little bit about some of the issues around social engineering threats. I know uh, when we look at this, there's several different elements that we can look at. One of the ones that I think is still a huge threat, and we saw this in the last report, has to do with rogue security software. Uh, Vinny, is there some insight that you can tell us? Actually, maybe you can tell us a little about what rogue security is too. Well, rogue security software uh, comes in one primary form, and that is uh, antivirus, or what it looks to be antivirus, right. uh, which will not be from a trusted vendor. Um, and so we continue to see the rise, uh, the costs uh, incur from a support perspective uh, here at Microsoft and throughout the, the partner community, um, any malware vendors, of course, as any uh, malware, any virus vendors, security vendors. So and it's interesting. The other interesting trend that we're seeing uh, outside the numbers continuing to grow with threats like fake green and ways in which they can get that on your machine. And when we talk to people about education, we tell them fake green. And next thing you know, they change the name to be something completely different, and we have to change the name as well to keep people updated. But um, and, and this is the virus writers that are calling these things. Uh, they're the ones that are making these changes. Right? Yeah, they're they're making the changes. We give it the name, of course. They make right. a change. They might call it something different that looks like a real antivirus or anti malware program. Their marketing techniques have evolved as well. Whereby really? today you might find that this thing pops up on your screen and says, "We found an infection." and that um, we can detect it and remove it, but in order for you to get the full version of the software, you need to pay us for it. Now, that's a common technique used in the security industry, antivirus you know, in, uh, industry for quite some time. It's not a bad practice, it's a good practice because the goal is to get you clean, and then of course, have you use their software for the long term, absolutely fine. Uh, the problem with that is that people are, are used to this now and then they'll buy into the fake version and say, well, I must need the real version and pay a bad guy some money, lose credit card information and some other personal identifiable information that then gets sold. So again, the message here, trusted vendor with Microsoft Security Essentials, it's free as an example, right. but we have no, well, download this version, you'll get the rest when you pay because of course it's for free. So you just download it uh, completely and get your machine cleaned up. Um, if you come to the Microsoft site, uh, we'll direct you as well towards all the major partners and vendors so that you know coming from our site you can get to a trusted vendor to buy software. Um, somebody mentioned to me recently that it, you know, it's pretty interesting that if the antivirus comes to you, it's probably not something that you want to buy. <laughs> right? You want to make sure that you go to the vendor right. to get it. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but the numbers continue to increase, which is interesting. The virus that I mentioned before, or the rogue uh, security software called Fake Green, up 300% from quarter to quarter. So the numbers continue to get big. Um, this quarter alone, uh, this past six months, we actually saw the first rogue antivirus for Mac, right? We call it Mac Defender, uh, was the commonly used name for it. So that was a, a pretty interesting piece as well. But again, this name changing, um, something called Fake Spy Pro was the most detected rogue family that we found, right? So there's just lots of people just need to be familiar with the fact that it's gonna look real, but it's not. All they really wanna do is get some, like I said, credit card information. They want some more information about you that they can sell on the internet. And now what they've actually done is they've hooked themselves into your machine, okay? And they have now what we call own your machine so that they can launch some other attack from your machine, have your machine host other malware threats that they can come down and upload from other machines that they own on the internet. So this whole concept of finding machines, controlling them and owning them and using them for their purposes, while you can still use your machine and do everything you want, is very different than what I think people are used to from the early days of virus outbreaks where you couldn't use your machine, simply because it was attacked, it was either taken down, it was attacked, it was used as a, as a jumping point to go to another machine, your machine crashed, Today, they want your machine to be up, healthy, working. You use it, they use it, all is good for them, but not so good for you. So, so you mentioned that 
these, the software comes to you. So what, what are some of the techniques that the software comes to you? Uh, Tim, do you have any insight on well, that? Absolutely. There's a couple of different uh, data points in uh, Security Intelligence Report Volume 11. So one of them is around phishing and one of them is around spam, right. uh, which are both attack vectors uh, you know, around social engineering. And so we saw uh, a massive decrease in spam during the first half of 2011 when uh, the Rustock botnet was taken down. So it was a notorious uh, spam uh, spam bot, and uh, when uh, the Microsoft Digital Crime Unit and, and a lot of their partners around the world worked to take that 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 uh, botnet down, immediately saw a big drop in spam. So we knew that that botnet was a big spam bot, maybe one of the most um, uh, notorious ones in the world. So is spam gone? So no, spam's not gone because uh, there's other criminals. They set up shop. There's other spam bots. Uh, that that uh, you know we're we're constantly fighting, and so um, pretty interesting time though to see a big drop in spam like that due to one botnet takedown. So that was pretty interesting. Um, phishing, phishing uh, is uh, continues to be sort of a worldwide phenomenon that we see all over the world. Uh, in the first half of 2011, we actually saw a big spike in uh, phishing uh, targeting social network sites. And so uh, typically attackers target banks, right? They pretend that they're a bank, they send you spam, try to get you to the bank, or they use a whole bunch of variety of techniques to get you to their site. Yeah, I think I got one of these messages where was, you know, the, my bank was trying to convince me to click on a link, right? Yeah. And so they'll take you to a site uh, that looks like your bank site. Right. And so typically they target bank sites and, uh, you know, usually that's the vast majority of impressions, the phishing impressions we get from Internet Explorer, the smart screen filter and the phishing filter. We see that we're blocking people from going to these phishing sites, specifically financial phishing sites most of the time. But in the first half of 2011, that shifted. In one month, in, in the month of April alone, we saw 83% of those phishing impressions, those blocks in Internet Explorer, going to, to uh, phishing sites that were, that were targeting uh, social networking sites. So what are some of the things that we can do to protect, uh, what, what can our, uh, our, everybody that's watching this do to protect themselves? Now, you mentioned something about utilizing our security central software, right? Well, that's certainly one. Again, the message is just to make sure that you've got up-to-date antivirus software on your machine from a, from a trusted vendor. Uh, make sure that you're updated, right? So update right. your OS, update your patch. Newer is better. We talked about that. The report goes into some great detail about some of the, the validation that I think that we've talked about for quite some time, as well as other security vendors. You want to update, keep security updated, OS updated, your applications, all updated. Thank you very much, uh, Tim, Vinny. Uh, I appreciate your time today, and this was a really educational opportunity for us to actually have it uh, have a chat. Um, if you'd like to get more exposure into the intelligence report, please visit Microsoft.com forward slash SIR, and you'll see the full report, all its components. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and, and I appreciate you listening.